Welcome to Word Form Design for PDF Forms. What we'll cover today is how to save time with good form design, best practices and layout, and how to lay out a form from scratch. We can start with the template, but I want you to know how to do it on your own if you need to. Here's an example of a well-designed form that's being used for a waiver. Up top, we have information that describes the form. Then we have fields, which are laid out in such a way that they're big enough, where if somebody needed to fill these out on something like an iPad, the fields would be big enough to see. There's plenty of room for each field for somebody to type in the different elements. And if we scroll down to the bottom of the form, we've got information at the bottom of the form to let people know who created the form, how to contact them, and a version number. In this circumstance, they used a date is the version number. Now this form is a PDF. It was converted from Microsoft Word. And when it was converted, there is a way to automatically have fields jump into the form to give you a starting point, which would save you a tremendous amount of time if you had a lot of fields on your form. Let's take a look at how that works now. Here I have the Crow's Lake form opened up in Microsoft Word. And what I'm going to do is go over to the Acrobat tab, and I'm going to create a PDF from this Word document. And when it creates the PDF, it'll open it up in Adobe Acrobat. If your version of Acrobat looks slightly different, that's OK. Um, this is the latest version. And here, we have a PDF version of that Word form. Now, there's no fillable fields on it yet. So what we want to do is we want to go over to Tools, and we want to go to Prepare Form. And it's selecting this here, and I just hit Start. And Word went through, and it tried to identify for Acrobat where the fields should be. And if you look over here, it didn't do a very good job. It found a couple of fields down the side. It put a field in the wrong place down here by the signature. And none of the fields up top were found. Let me show you an example of some layouts that make it easy for Acrobat to find the fields and put them in for you automatically. Now, we've done some experimentation with different layouts in Word to figure out how to lay out fields so that when Adobe Acrobat opens the form up, it can find the fields and put them in the proper places for you. So if we scroll down this template that we've created, here's an example of side-by-side -side fields. Here's vertically stacked fields. Here's fields where the caption is above where somebody types in the fields. And here's an example of some column fields. So let's go through the same process using this template. I'm going to go to Acrobat and I'm going to create a PDF. And I'll save that PDF. And now it opens up the PDF inside of Adobe Acrobat. And you can see the layout is all the way and if I go to Tools, Prepare Form again, Acrobat was able to identify all of the fields and actually pick up on the field names from my captions and put them in the right place. This is what we want to have happen because this will save you a tremendous amount of time. Now, some of these field names might not be the way you want. You can always go into properties and change those at any time. That's no problem. But getting these fields in place right from the get-go is the big time saver. So let me go in and I'm going to show you how to lay out fields or use the template that I just showed to create forms and make the process go much more quickly. I'm sorry to interrupt right in the middle of the tutorial, but I wanted to bring up a topic that may be of great importance to you when you're building PDF forms. 
for years, PDF forms have worked as a plugin with the web browsers and Internet Explorer and Chrome, etc. But they don't work that way anymore. And because of this, the PDF forms that you're going to be building won't work directly inside web browsers on all devices. At FormRouter, we actually create technology to help organizations take their PDF forms that they build and make those into online forms so that they work on all devices. So what you're learning today, uh, learning how to convert Word forms into PDF forms is still of great value. But if you want to take the next step and make those work on the web to work on all devices, you can collect responses. Please check us out at formrouter.com. That's formrouter.com. I'll get back to the tutorial now. Thank you. So here we are back inside of Word using our design template for good Word forms. And what you'll see is that all of these were designed inside of tables. The cool thing about tables is they allow you to set up borders easily. They allow you to position captions inside of borders and they allow you also to create a little space at the bottom of the caption, which can force down the size of a field to allow a lot of space for data entry. If I scroll down, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here is our table down here. Okay. And if we look at this row here in particular, we go to the table properties. You can see that the row height was set to 0.3. And the reason we did that is because we wanted to make sure that the row height was big enough to type into, but more importantly, big enough where the caption would end up at the top of the row, not in the center. For some reason, Acrobat likes to pick up these captions if they're positioned at the top. You can see all of these captions in each of the different layouts is positioned that way. So let's do this from scratch. Here I have a blank Word document and I'm going to insert and I'm going to select table and for now I'm just going to put four rows across and three down. If we were to go in and just start typing first name, let's say last name, what we would find out is that when we want to convert this, that it would try to put a field here. Acrobat doesn't like that. So I'm going to delete those out. And what we're going to do is we're going to set a row height for the whole table. So I'm going to click here in the top left hand corner, which selects the entire table. Then I'll right mouse click. And I'll go to table properties. And for row, I'm going to specify 0.3. Now rows can get bigger if you want when you type in a very long caption, but they'll never be smaller than this. So the other thing I want to do is I think I also want to set the font to be 10. So now I can come in here. I can put in first name. And if I like, I can right justify that. Over here, I can put in last name. And I can right justify that. Over here, I can put in date. And I could put in something like phone number. And another way to write justify is you can select a whole column. And you can write justify like that as well. To get everything aligned so it looks good and functions well, you'll want to be able to move, merge, and split cells. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this line and select it. I'm going to drag it over here 
because you need more room for a first name and last name than you do a date or a phone number. So that's moving the lines inside the table cells. The next thing you may want to do is you may want to select a couple of cells and merge them. And the third thing you may want to do is go in and actually split cells. And you can choose how many columns it splits across. And now you can put more information in here. So between moving, which is grabbing onto these little bars, merging, which is selecting them, merging them together, and splitting cells, you can get the layout to look the way you want. Going back to our Word template, you'll notice that in addition to having fields that are side by side, we also have some fields with captions that are top over bottom. And this is really important when you want to set up columns with rows of fields, because you may have two or you may have 10 of these. So the trick to getting Adobe Acrobat to pick up on these fields properly is to have a small area here for the caption and then a larger field below it. In this circumstance, I just have one field below it. But over here, I could have one or many. So let me show you how to lay these out. Going back to our blank word page, I can go to insert table and I'm going to insert a table with three columns and two rows and what we can do is I will set the font size for the entire table to be 10 okay now I can type into the top I'll just put in here um, Column one, column two, and column three. And if I choose to, I can also center those, but I don't need to for this example. Now, those will provide the caption names that we need. And down here, if I click this little plus, I can add a couple more rows. But when we run this through Adobe Acrobat, first of all, these really aren't going to be tall enough for somebody to type into or maybe touch with their finger on a small screen. So rather than setting the row height for all these fields by selecting the whole table like we did last time, what we're going to do is we're going to click to the left and drag down and select just the rows that we want. Right mouse click, go to table properties, and now we're going to specify 0.3 is the row height. And now we have a scenario where we have lots of room for people to type in even on mobile devices and Adobe Acrobat is going to pick up properly on the column names which are going to be used for the field names as this is converted over to a PDF form. One other thing to mention has to do with the layout of the form itself. When I lay out forms I like to take and set the margins to be custom. When you create a Word document, it often sets the margins at the top and the left and the right of your document to be pretty large. And when you're designing forms, you want the form to be able to hold as much information as possible, but still be able to print. So I typically go in and set custom margins, and I set them all to 0.7 for the top, left, bottom, and right. I find that'll print on pretty much any printer. And it also gives you just a little bit more space to work with. 
While we're on the topic of keeping things in place, one thing you'll want to do is make sure that at the bottom of your form, you actually use the footer section to put in any address information and revision numbers from your form. This will make it so that if you add additional pages to your form, that that information will always be at the bottom. And also, by mistake, you won't end up scrolling that information onto another page. As far as layout when it comes to forms goes, you want to be creative, but you really want to keep it minimalistic. People as a rule often feel a little edgy or nervous or confused about forms. So you want to be as minimalistic as possible. Don't overuse underlines in your forms or colors unless they make sense to separate different sections of the form. Also, if you're going to have somebody do a signature on the form, make sure that the signature boxes are about five or six rows high. This allows enough room for someone maybe to sign with their finger on an iPad. I know oftentimes we see paper forms and they just have a single little line, but if you're going to use a form for electronic uses, make sure that signature line is very tall. So there we have it. The topic's covered. How to save time with good form design. In a nutshell, if you design your form in Word so that Adobe Acrobat can consume it and drop the fields in, it'll save you a lot of time, especially with a multi-page form. Secondly, we talked about best practices as far as the margins and the layout of a form. And finally, we showed you how to build specific form objects from scratch that you'll want to put inside every one of your forms to get great layout when they're finally turned into a PDF.